can you please ex escort Rannon into the room when we get started with our contest? Okay. Rannon Harris. Rannon Harris. And there he is. There he is. All right, with that, give yourself a round of applause for the first half going wow! Okay. I'm very glad you decided to come on this Thursday evening and give your time over to hear some wonderful speakers. Wow. Let's hear it for our tabletop speakers. Wow. They did a great job the first half. I know our inspiration speakers are going to do just as well. And with that, I'm going to have Tim Bolger, our district videographer, come up and say a couple minutes. Let's welcome Tim. All right. Real brief, these contests are being taped for posterity's sake to be posted to the internet. If you do not want to be taped, I'll let it you out. Uh, I do have release forms for you to sign. You can access the last four years of division contests and above at the conference at www.timsvideo.com. But please remember, these are being taped for posterity's sake. Thank you. As I look at my program, which I have here, I hope that everybody else has a program. If you don't, raise your hand and we'll get our sergeant arm to get your program. Excellent. Everybody's following the program and has a program. Well done. With that, let's welcome our contest master up once again, Amy Sagami. Amy! If you use your cell phone during the break, please take another look. And make sure it's on silent. Well, if you're not sure what to do with it, just turn it off. <laughs> Once the contest has begun, the sergeant at arms will secure the doors. Members of the audience are asked to refrain from leaving or entering the room during the contest. After the contest, please do not leave the room until it's determined that all the ballots have been collected. Please check again about your cell phone. Now I'm going to announce the speaking order of the contestant. I'll repeat it one, once after that. Contestant number one, Dorothea Smith. Contestant number two, Anita Perkins. Contestant number three, Alan Green. Contestant number four, Rennan Harris. Contestant number five, Barbara Baker. Contestant number six, Yin Menin. I'll repeat. Contestant number one, Dorothea Smith. Contestant number two, Anita Perkins. Contestant number three, Alan Green. Contestant number four, Rannon Harris. Contestant number five, Barbara Baker. Contestant number six, is Yin Menin. When I announce them, I will read, I will call the contestant and I'll read their title twice and call their name again. And that's when you can report them to the stage. There will be a minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeeper, when I advise you to do so, please signal me with the green light when one minute is up. After all the contestants have Spoken, the judge will be given all the time they need to complete the ballot. So now we're going to begin with our first contestant, Dorothea Smith. Get that monkey off my back. No, your back. Excuse me. Get that monkey off your back. Get that monkey off your back. Dorothea Smith. situation? Have you ever tried to get a monkey off your back? 
Madam Contest Chair, distinguished guests and dignitaries, fellow Toastmasters. It was time to return to work after a three month leave of absence. Surprisingly, there was not one item in three closets or four 30 gallon containers that could fit. And to make matters worse, when I stepped foot into that office, my coworker said, girl, you are fat. That devastated me. There was no need to remind me of the 15 pound monkey on my back. <laughs> Later that evening, after being at home with my husband and sharing this information, he said, Marie, there is no crying. There is no whining. There is no complaining. Don't talk about it. Do something about it. You have a gym in that basement. March down those stairs. Dust off that treadmill. Dust off that elliptical. And my God, get that 15-year-old stability ball out of that box. <laughs> Her insult and his advice made me determine right then and there to become fit and to get the monkey off my back. <laughs> Step one, focus on a fitness routine. Two days a week at 60 minutes after dusting off that treadmill. Hmm. <laughs> Another two days after dusting off that elliptical, 60 minutes. An additional two days, I finally dust off that 15 year old stability ball. It was blown up and I <laughs> utilized it as well as jump rope, just like the boxes do, and utilize some videos. Step two, implement a new menu. There was no more tacos, no more Doritos, and no more chocolate low jobs for breakfast. It was replaced with a cup of Cheerios or a cup of oatmeal and a banana. For lunch, there was no more dates with over red vodka, cattle corn, a payday, or a twist. It was replaced with a nutri grade bar and a variety of fruit. And as much as I love my husband's homemade bread and his clay, less bread, more vegetables, and quality H2O. Why? Because I was determined to become fit and to get the monkey off my back. <laughs> Step three, transform. Six months later, six sizes smaller, mm -hmm. and 40 pounds lighter. Transformed my mind, transformed my body, and became fit. Which of you would like to get out of debt. Which of you would like to lose weight? Which of you wants to deal with the unpleasant situation in your life? You too can be determined to get the monkey off your back. If you implement the fit, focus, implement, and transform. Allow your body and your mind to become focused. You do not allow someone's opinion dictate your destiny. Fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests, I appoint each of you CEOs, Chief Empowerment Officers. A CEO is a decision maker. You become determined. You 
become the decision maker and deal with the monkey on your back. Remember, fit. Focus on the goal at hand. Implement the necessary changes and transform your body and your mind to accept the new you. You become fit and get the monkey off your back. Battle Contest Chief. May we have a minute of silence, timekeepers, please, while the judge mark their balance. Thank you. Contestant number two, Anita Perkins. Let them know. Let them know. Anita Perkins. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, and honored guests. By a show of hands, how many of you are married or have a significant other? And by a show of hands, how many of you have children? And when is the last time, Paul, you told your child that you loved them? About eight hours ago. About eight hours ago. And the young lady in the back, with the glasses? On the telephone yesterday to my daughter. On the telephone yesterday to her daughter. I told my husband and daughter this morning that I loved them, and I told my mom yesterday. When it comes to our family, we have no problem letting them know how we feel. But what about our friends? Do we tell them how we feel? With them, it's a little different, right? With our friends, our actions speak louder than words. You were there at the last wedding. You were there at the funeral. You showed up at the baby shower or the picnic or barbecue. You were there, weren't you, just to sit and listen to what your friends had to say. Well, when it comes to our friends, once again, actions speak louder than words. Or at least that's what I thought until Wednesday, October 2nd, 2013. Now that date may not hold any significance to any of you, but for me, that's when I almost lost my friend, P.W. Now P.W. isn't just my friend. She's my co-worker, and she sits right across from me. We've known each other for over six years. And every Friday, we go through our usual routine. Hey girl, good night. You have a good weekend. I'll see you Monday. Nothing more needed to be said. Well, Monday came. PW wasn't at her desk. Where's PW, I asked. She's normally here before me. She must be taking PTO day. And then her number came up on my phone. Hey girl, I'm in the hospital. What? 
I said, don't worry, I'm fine. It's just a little food poisoning. Do you need anything? Are you okay? I'm fine. They'll be releasing me today. Will you take care of yourself? And if you need anything, you just let me know. There was no more to be said. She knew how I felt. I come to work Wednesday, and there PW is at her desk. What are you doing here, I ask. You need to be home resting. You are so hard-headed. <laughs> I walked away from my desk, shaking my head. There was no more to be said. She knew how I felt. Five minutes later, I came back to my desk. We've called an ambulance for PW, my manager told me. She's gotten sick again. What? How could this be? All the while, while I rode in the ambulance with her, holding her hands. You're going to be all right, I told her. Everything's going to be fine. We got her at the hospital. They rushed her into emergency. She was going to be fine. There was no more to be said. I was there. She knew how I felt. And then the doctor came out. Your friend is having a heart attack. What? I can't believe this. As I sat there trying not to fall apart, trying to offer whatever comfort I could to her mother, to her sister, to her family, all I could think is, I never told her I loved her. I never told her how much I appreciated her being a mentor, a friend. I never told her how much I just appreciated her being a part of my life. Now this story has a happy ending because PW recovered. And I was able to walk in that room and take her hand and say, I love you, PW. Now, I don't tell the story to be morbid. I tell the story with her full permission. Because actions do speak louder than words, but our friends need to hear those words. So what I want you to do when you leave here today, I want you to think about that friend that's been on your mind. Pick up the phone. Let them know how you feel. Think about that friend that you see every single day. Let them know how you feel. Think about that friend that's been there for you as a mentor and inspiration. Let them know. Because yes, actions do speak louder than words, but our friends, they need to hear those words. You see, yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not promised. All we have is today. Let them know. Thank you. Contestant number three is Alan Green. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Alan Green.
Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Welcome, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. Forgiveness takes a lot of courage, and a lot of it. My journey to forgiveness started when my friend George was complaining about a friend of his who insulted him, and, he was, and his feelings were hurt. Have your feelings ever been hurt by someone? So I looked at myself and I said, have my feelings ever been hurt by someone? And I was reminded of when I was 11 years old, I'm pedaling on my bike, having a good time, pedaling and in the sun and having a, riding along the road, and I hit a rock. I went down. I hurt, scraped my knees. My mom was looking onward. I was like, this is not going to be good. She comes over and says, Alan, I told you not to ride that bike. You got hurt like I told you. No ice cream for a week. Well, that was a lifetime. That was just giving an idea of what my mom was like. I had a lifetime of that. <laughs> Fast forward 40 years. I'm a little wiser, and I'm concentrating on being a better me. I visit my mom in the, house, in the, in the nursing home, and she's in a wheelchair. And I'm looking at her, thinking, my mother loved me. I know she did. But somehow she got mixed up between love and anger. And you think, how's that possible? Well, I asked myself the same question. And here's what happened. I had an aha moment. Mom, I know you did the best you could. And I think I figured out how you got love and anger all mixed up. In 1938, you're only 14 years old. You have to decide to either flee to Russia or stay in Poland when the Nazis are coming. And you made a decision to stay with your parents. That was a tough decision, and you paid for it dearly. I just want you to know that I forgive you for everything ever I felt hurt. That day, I became a better me because I forgave my mom. Now George, who likes to complain, if you haven't noticed, says, you know, a friend of his accused him of hurting their feelings. Have you ever caused anyone to feel you hurt their feelings? I looked at myself and said, have I ever hurt someone's feelings? Folks, Get the Rolodex out. <laughs> so I thought long and hard, who's the closest to me? Who's important that I should ask forgiveness for? I thought a while. I thought about my kids. I said, well, maybe I wasn't the most perfect father. Maybe I wasn't as mature as I would like to have been. So I'll ask for their forgiveness for anything that I maybe I didn't do very well. My son Nathan, who was 18 at the time, says, Dad, you, you really did the best you could. We didn't come with manuals, and you didn't have a good role model. You know, I met your mom. <laughs> but I have to say, you've, you've really taken care of me, you're complimentary, and I, you know what, I appreciate the changes you've made to become a better <coughs> man. I, I really appreciate it. Who wouldn't want a son like that? Now, my daughter, Alana, who's 22 at the time, is not so forgiving and a little stubborn. I don't know where she got that from. <laughs> yeah, Dad, you, you weren't always complimentary. You're a little stingy with that. And yeah, yeah, you were patient with me all the time. Lana, I, I, I know I wasn't always patient <laughs> and complimentary, and I hope you'll forgive me. Let's talk. I now have a great relationship with my kids. And I was a better person, a better me that day, when I asked forgiveness from my children. Another day, George comes to me and says, I, he says to me, he's his own worst critic. <coughs> How's your critic? In my contemplative mood, I say, How, how's my critic? To be honest with you, my critic right now says, Alan, have you seen the competition up here? Pretty stiff, huh? 
Folks, you've met my mom, you've met my children. I want to introduce you to another member of my family. I'm going to call him Self, with a big S. Self is relentless, follows me around all day, saying things like, what were you thinking, man? I'm, I'm looking for a way to get some help. And I'm thinking about a world champ, Mr. Vasilev, who said, reach out and ask for help. I looked to the universe and I said, please, please help me find a way to forgive self. I haven't heard back yet. <laughs> so I decided, what else can I do? Well, let's see. Oh, it's Lent, time of atonement, right? It's springtime a time of renewal. And I said, what better way to renew yourself than to forgive self? Forgive self with a big S. You might ask, what does forgiveness look like, Alan? Forgiveness would be nurturing yourself. Loving self. And finally, making peace with self. In summary, to be a better you, forgive someone that's hurt you, ask for forgiveness from someone that you have hurt, and most of all, forgive your own self. I want to be a better me. And from the bottom of my heart, I hope that each and every one of you find the courage to be a better you. Contestant number four is Renan Harris. Rise up and be the phoenix you are destined to be. Rise up and be the phoenix you are destined to be. Renan Harris. I felt sorry for myself. I thought I was going to be standing in the unemployment line. I thought life as I knew it was over. Madam Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests, how many times in your life have you been tested? And sometimes we feel like those tests are insurmountable and that we won't get through them, but somehow we do. If I were to compare my life to something, I would compare it to that of the Greek myth, the phoenix. Now, the phoenix was reborn and resurrected, and it's symbolic of that. And depending upon the story that you hear of the phoenix, the phoenix went down in flames trying to help someone, but then came back as a bigger and stronger bird. Now, like many of you, I failed, I crashed, and I burned but I've been able to return with a brighter illumination. I've been able to find out 
what it was that I messed up on and been able to improve on that and come back even bigger and stronger. I'm here today to show you how to fly again after you have crashed and burned. My job paid for me to take a test that was $500 and I failed. I came up with every excuse in the book about failing. That guy over there took it seven times and he failed each and every time. How do they expect for me to take this test and work and then pass? I let all of these excuses mount up within me and I did the unthinkable. I failed. Of course, I blamed everyone, but I forgot to blame one person. Hmm. I forgot to blame myself. Out of all the excuses that I came up with, I had to come to remember that excuses are tools of incompetence, and those that use them seldom amount to anything. I had to change my own outcome. I had to then perform the three Ps. I had to practice. I had to read the material in that book. I had to make sure I took practice tests online. I had to prepare. I went and took an online course, and then I went and took a boot camp for the class. And then I came to perform. After changing my mindset, on retake day, what did I do? I passed. I changed my mode of thinking. I molded my own outcome. I did exactly that. I failed, I crashed, and I burned. But then I was able to come back, be reborn, as a bigger and stronger bird. I changed. I was able to get my focus back. That's what helped me propel myself to passing that test. Now, five years ago, I hit the ultimate low. There, this was something that I knew I was not going to be able to bounce back from. I grew up two brothers, not just brothers, best friends. I was ride or die for these two guys. <coughs> and of course, within life, things happen. We started going our own separate ways as we got older. And there's one conversation that I will never in my life forget. My middle brother called. He said, hey, bro, what's going on? How are you? I think we stayed on the phone about two hours talking about his life, what was going on with me, talking about his girlfriend, talking about school. It was the best time of my life, just being able to catch up. But at the end of that conversation, he said, hey, bro, can you do me a favor? See, I was what was known as the fixer within the family. You needed something, you called me. You needed money, you called me. You wanted to talk to somebody, you called me. He said, I need, I, I need you to do me a favor. My microwave is broken. It's, it's you know, it's wishy-washy. Can you please send me another one? I didn't think too much of it. I said, okay, I'll send you a microwave. Has anyone ever lost a family member or someone that's close to them? As my brother was close to me? Yes, he died. And this was not something that was expected, it was sudden. I will never forget, it was the day after Valentine's Day. He had just had Valentine's Day dinner with his girlfriend. His hands were wet, he was making tea, and then he decided to heat up his food. His microwave button didn't work, so he stuck his hand behind the microwave to press it to make it start. But instead he hit a coil and it sent an electric shock through his body that his body could not withstand. He died. Can you imagine the guilt that I felt? The monkey that was on my back from having to, to go back and forth within myself about not buying that microwave for him. This was two weeks later. I could have bought that microwave for him and sent it to him, so I put the death of my brother on my shoulders. On these broad shoulders stood his death. But I, like the Phoenix, had to rise again. 
I knew that he wanted the best for me. He did not want to see me go down in flames. So I rose up out of those flames and I became closer to my other brother. And I said, life is not promised. Things happen for a reason and it actually pushed me and my oldest brother closer. Now we are best friends again, but we still have the memory of our other brother in our lives. Now, we are going to face challenges every day, going to work, having to do a contest, or any other type of challenge that comes in our way. But we have to focus on the way that we are going to get through that situation. We might crash and burn, but it's about how we lift ourselves up after we crash and burn that makes us the phoenix that we're destined to be. So I leave you with this. Are you going to crash and burn and stay down? Or will you rise again and come back stronger and better than you did before? Madam Contest Chair. Thank you. Contestant number five, Barbara Baker. Formulas for love. Bob, formulas for love, Barbara Baker. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and distinguished guests. The formulas for love. Tonight I'm talking about pure love. Love that can improve marriage, love in marriage. Romantic love, love for your children, love for your community, love for yourself, and love for the Almighty. The first acronyms I'm gonna use for this formula our four C's and LPS. <laughs> the first C is courtesy. Have you ever observed someone walking their dogs? When the two dogs pass each other, what do they do? <laughs> they start sniffing, they start barking, they start wagging their tail, they are speaking. Now should we let the dogs outdo us? <laughs> When we pass by another human, we should say, hello, how are you? It makes a big difference. You should see the reaction of the people when you speak to them and how you feel about it when they respond. The next C is concern. As a Toastmaster, if you haven't seen a member at the meeting lately, it's up to you to call up to see what's going on. Email them, text them, call them up and say you miss them at the club. When are they returning? You're concerned. The third C is being considerate. You're with someone and you're about to make a big decision. You discuss it with them. You know, I'm getting ready to do this. He will feel so warm that you consider him in sharing that new venture you're about to take on. And especially with your family members, Bring them in and be considerate, sharing with them what's something that's going to affect everybody. Consideration. And the fourth C is compassionate communication. 
Oh, we Toastmasters know about compassionate communication. In our evaluations, we always give uplifting evaluation, positive evaluations. And that's important in compassionate communication. Say encouraging words. That brings us to the L. L is for listening. We must listen in this formula. We must listen. Sometimes someone calls you up, you should have a pad by the phone because they might share with you when their birthday is or where their anniversary is or the restaurant they went to that they were overwhelmed with or their favorite color. You write that down. <laughs> and then on the other hand, someone might call you and you're about to take off for something somewhere and you're very busy, but you go back to compassionate communication. You don't say, honey, I'm getting ready to leave. I can't talk. You say, look, you know, I really want to listen to you tonight, but I'm busy in a special project. When's another time we can talk? Because I really want to give you my input. Compassionate communication. Don't you know they would feel so much better that you didn't cut them short because you're so busy? So let's use those four C's, and then let's use the LPS. Now we're on the P for patience. That's the one I'm working on. <laughs> oh, boy. I drove into the intersection. I don't know whose turn it is at the intersection. I really don't know. The person on the east is supposed to go, the person on the west or whatever. Well, when I got to the intersection, I pulled off. A man came this way and gave me the meanest look. I said, ooh, it wasn't my turn. <laughs> so, you know that anger is no good. That brings me to the S in the LPS. Slow to anger. <coughs> when you get angry, your blood pressure can go up. Your immune system can become unbalanced. So let's stay healthy by not being so quick to get angry. And recently, some scientists did a study. They found out that infants who are hugged are better off emotionally and physically. So hugging is important. Let's try it tonight. Hug yourself. <laughs> Woo, give it a little turn. Oh, hug yourself. Those hugs are so good for you. Another important uh, formula, part in the formula is Food. Would you believe it? <laughs> food. <laughs> Good food is so great. You know when you have your family get-togethers and everybody get together and you're all eating and talking. Oh, the good food is just wonderful. And then, of course, you always must have music. Oh, there's so many songs that they've written about love. At my son's uh, wedding reception, I sang for him, Love and marriage, love and marriage. They were so pleased. They were so pleased. And as I look around at what's going on in the world right now, I'm really concerned, you all. I believe we Toastmasters could bring some peace to this world. Well, I'm going to see if you like this song enough to join in with me. <laughs> what the world needs now is love, sweet love, not just for some, but for everyone. Don't you agree? Love in this world, Russia, Ukraine, all the wars going on, love is the answer. And the formulas for love will work in all those areas. Ms. Tope's message.
Thank you. Contestant number six, Yin Nani. Show up. Show up. Yin Nani. Forty-five thousand runners, twenty-six long and ruthless miles. I was standing at the home stretch. I could smell the sweat. I could hear the pound on the pavement. I could feel the determination. I could see the pain on their faces. But most of all, they can taste the finish line. Fellow Toastmasters, guests, have you been so inspired that you get mad at yourself? I was at the Chicago Marathon cheering on a friend. I didn't see her, but I saw where I was supposed to be. I was supposed to be in that race. Let me take you back to 2008, where I threw the biggest party for myself. Not one of these, <laughs> not wine and cheese, <laughs> not happy birthday to you, but I threw a pity party. I gave up on my music career, and I sat on the couch, and I felt sorry for myself. One thing about a pity party, you don't have to leave. It doesn't close. Not until I was invited to a Les Brown seminar by a friend. Who is Les Brown? <laughs> what is a seminar? <laughs> but guess what? I didn't have anything else better to do, and I showed up. That night, I took notes. Three pages. With one message crossed my mind and it stuck with me to this day. In life, it's 97% what happened to you, but three, what you do about it. But that three is so important. That started my whole personal development journey. I'm ashamed to say, in 2008, I read my first book, on my own. But I read 30 more books. And in 2011, I showed up at the gym. I was 5'6 to 300 pounds. And I signed up for a membership. Can you believe what happens next? In two years, I lost 100 pounds. I joined a nonprofit organization that teaches you how to speak and be a leader, which changed my whole life. And in 2013, I got comfortable. I stopped growing. I had three main goals. To feel better about myself, to make weight to skydive, and to run a marathon. I did the first two, but I omitted the third one. And I was standing at the home stretch. I couldn't believe it. I didn't sign up. That ride home was so humbling. I promised myself, whatever race is coming up, I was going to sign up for it which happens to be a half marathon, which happens to be the next week, <laughs> which was 13 miles, which I didn't train for. But guess what happened? I showed up. I started running. And at mile number eight, I stopped and I quit. 
who says you have to run the whole race? I showed up. I can go at my pace. And guess what happened? I ran, I jogged, I ran, I jogged, and I finished. I threw that pity part for myself. I used to ask, why me? Now I ask myself, why not me? You have to show up in life. Because if you don't show up, you'll never win. I used to throw pity parties for myself. My father wasn't there. My mother didn't tell me anything. She worked so hard that she couldn't raise me. But there's no award for Oscar after of the year without a father. The rector of the year without a college diploma. In life, you show up. Because if you don't show up, you don't have a chance. I'm glad I showed up that day in 2008 to a Les Brown seminar. I'm so glad I showed up at a Toastmaster meeting. I'm so glad that I showed up at that half marathon. Because if I can't do a half marathon, how will I run a whole marathon? 2014, I'm so excited. I'm back. I'm not in the comfort zone anymore. I'm showing up. Whatever you have for me, and I look to the sky, I will show up to it. I will listen to my heart. Because in life, it's just like a race against yourself. And in a race, there's an ending. You have to show up to play the game. You have to show up to have a chance to even win. Fellow Toastmasters guests, show up. You have nothing to lose and so much to gain. Experience or victory. Show up. Because if you don't show up, you don't have a chance. Show up and win. Madam Chair. Everyone, please remain silent for the judges to complete their ballots. And the ballots have been collected by the vote counters.
Relax now. Whatever is done is done. We're going to get to know our contestant, but before I call them up, get up and go and get some food if you wish to, you know, instead of waiting the last minute. Okay? I'm going to call up all the contestants, so it will be in the order of appearances. Now, I'll call your name and just please all line up and please stand at the edge so that we can see your face. And none of this hiding in the back. Okay, so as I call your name, please come up starting from my left and line up here so we can get the chance to know you. So I'll first, and we will be every contestant, so we will just fill the stage. It's more impressive that way. Good? Okay, we start out with Jack and Gabriella, Brandon. Teddy, Susan, George, be closer. Susan, George, Tim, okay. Okay, Jack, Gabriella, Brandon, Teddy, Susan, George, Tim. Okay, can you do kind of a side way or oh I guess we'll have to wait for the next one. Let's see. What do you think? Beautiful. Wait. Uh, take a step out a little bit, just to really get the light on your face. <laughs> because as the speaker, it's nothing worse than speaking in the dark unless it's part of your plan. <laughs> <laughs> so, we would like to know which club you represent, what's your education in the Toastmasters uh, level, and how long have you been a Toastmaster? CTA Toastmasters 1560990. I have just completed my ACG and I have my ACS or ALS. I've been a Toastmaster for three and a half years. Thank you. And we'll hold a pause until we get to everybody. Yes. Yes, I'm with Red Hot Toastmasters. I've been a Toastmaster for about three and a half years. I have my advanced leader bronze and one more speech to get my advanced communicator bronze. Yeah. I'm with the AT&T Toastmasters Club and I have my CC. How long have you been? I've been a Toastmaster for about five years. Five years, thank you. I'm Patty Yard and I have nothing <laughs> 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 because I've been a Toastmaster a little less than a year. Oh, thank you. I represent the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association Club. I'm at home here with Trust Masters at Northern Trust. I joined Northern in 2010 and joined Toastmasters in 2011. However, in Michigan, where I'm from, I was in a club for about 11 years. I'm silver and Continuing on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And George? Yes, I'm with the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois Club, and I've been there two years, and I have my CC. Tim? I'm Tim Wilson, and I've been a Toastmaster since the beginning, and I'm a DTM, <laughs> which means, as you know, don't touch me. <laughs> okay. And tell us a little bit more about yourself, and we are curious. With, uh, with Jack. So you mentioned about your traveling. What's your favorite place of traveling? God, there's so many to choose from. I think I really like to go to Cancun. So when I go to Cancun, I go with a barrage of people to go to Cancun with me. Can you imagine like 5,000 people all at a resort just going crazy? That's my kind of vacation. <laughs> okay, now we got you. Okay, and Gabriella, you have an interesting experience of traveling to Brazil as an exchange student. How did that impact you? Well, uh, 
as the youngest child in my family and the closest child, about five years older almost, I was at home alone in my high school years with my parents. It was kind of quiet existence. And when I went to Brazil for a year right after high school, I was put into the most social, warm, and friendly culture. I had more friends than I'd ever had in my whole life. Going out with friends, music, dancing, it was just a wonderful, loving experience. So travel has been doing good, huh? Yes. <laughs> Let's see, we found into the theme here. No, this one is about working out. You put, that's one of your hobby and interest. And not only you work out your mind, you work out physically, is that what you mean? I do, I do. Um, one thing, <laughs> after listening to the fit speech, <laughs> I definitely am one of those people that get up in the morning and try to run two miles and try to keep in shape. Um, I love to run. I ran track and field in college and high school and grade school, so went to the Olympic trials. So I just tried to keep up with the same type of mentality I had when I went to the Olympic trials and still try to work out every day or at least five times a week, so try to stay fit. Thank you. And Patty put a very interesting thing here, and she said, virtual reality. <clears throat> Tell us more. So I started looking into virtual reality, specifically something called Second Life, when I was getting my master's degree as part of looking at how to work better with remote people, you know, trying to bring our office together from all over the world, and using that as a communications platform. But I found that it was even more useful for me as a single mother of a thousand children and a commute that's an hour and a half every day, both each, each way, to have a social life. And it allowed me to meet people from all over the world. I've been able to listen to the bandoleros uh, in uh, Colombia while they were out in the rain out of somebody's window through their microphone and just really be able to use that as a resource to keep myself sane. Interesting. I'm going to take a quick poll here. Who, who would like to know more about virtual reality, Second Life? Is that something you want to touch on? And yeah, yeah, I do too. Thank you. And Susan, you are a foodie. <laughs> I'm a foodie. <laughs> Tell us more about foodie. <laughs> well, I got here to Chicago all by myself. And I decided that I needed to discover Chicago. So in, in, in making a few friends, we decided that we would try new restaurants once a month. And my boss is not in the room anymore, right? I, I made a commitment to Northern that I would stay for seven years. So in 2017, I'll likely retire. We intend to hit every restaurant in the greater Chicago area by the time I leave Chicago in 2017. My boss doesn't know I'm leaving, so I'm done. <laughs> we need to talk, I think uh, we want to have something for you. Okay, so moving along here, and with George, you say you're, looking, you're interested in retirement. That's where you spend all your time in. Well, I don't mean, when I, when I said in the survey, planning for retirement, I don't mean saving for retirement. Of course, that's important too. I mean actually planning for what you're going to do. I find it interesting that when you're planning your vacation, you're going one week and you'll spend months <laughs> checking out where you're going to go, what beach you're going to have the best sand, who has the best airline deals. But your retirement, you're going to probably spend 20 years somewhere and people don't really give it any thought. And so we've been traveling. My wife and I have been traveling and checking out different locations, different countries, different places where we might want to retire to. Oh. And that's our that's our activity. That's our hobby is to check out these different places, these different communities, these different little villages, and see where it would be where it would be best uh, financially, and just to accommodate our personalities and our lifestyle for the next phase of our life. Keep up with the work, and probably have some more. Uh speeches material as well. Working on them now. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, we have Tim Wilson, who is a professional, spe professional spe uh, speech coach. And you say there's a well, great speaker within everybody. What? So 
great speaker. You want to bring up the greatest speaker within. Well, right. Uh, first of all, I just want to clarify. I'm not in, in second life, as you have apologies. I'm still working my first life. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Twain said it best. He said, it's a terrible death to be talked about. So my goal is to prevent audience casualties. <laughs> you felt that experience, you're going through a speech, and you just sort of feel yourself ratchet going through your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth lives. That's the sort of thing I want to prevent. So that's why I'm a professional speech coach. Okay. Well, I'm going to hand out the certificate of participation. I'll let you to stay on the stage and just kind of get a little bit closer. So, friends, take out your camera, get a good shot of blue shot, a little bit closer. Just kind of, oh, this one. <laughs> Jim. And Joel. And Susan. They all say the same thing, except the name. <laughs> and Jack. And just, uh, we got photos? Give him a big hand. Thank you. Please lead the role. Thank you so much. Now we have the international speech contestant coming up. Please do the same as I call your name. Start lining up from my left here. We have Dorothea, Anita, Anna. Renan has been called already, so I will skip uh, you. And Barbara and Eve. Where's Eve? Okay. Dorothea, Anita, Anna, and Barbara and Eve. Okay, so please tell us the club you're representing, your, how long you've been with Toastmasters, and your educational level, please. I'm representing Blue Cross and Blue Snow Villa, Joy Club number one. I've been with Toastmasters, it's going to be two years next month. And I have my ACB, and after tonight's speech, my ACS, as well as an HPL. <coughs> Say how long you've been with the two years. Next month. Thank you. I'm with Red Hot Toastmasters '96-'92. I've been with them for about two years. Next month, I plan to have my CC, and I'm also the VP of Public Relations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just step up just a little bit closer, everyone. Yeah. Thank I'm you. Alan, Alan Green. I belong to HHS Human Health Services, and I've uh, been a member since 2001. In fact. Tonight, I guess I earn a CC for my club. Oh. All right. And I bet, yeah, that, that's, that's all you want to know. <laughs> I can't remember. I'm okay. my brain shot. <clears throat> Barbara Baker, uh, I've been in Toastmasters since 1988. Ying Manin, um, year number four this October, Michigan Avenue Toastmasters, 5752. Earned my CC and served as a sergeant at the arms, president, and now a treasurer. Thank you. Okay, quickly, tell us a little bit about yourself here. You say bowling. I wouldn't expect. Uh... I like to adventure on anything that's fun that I don't never have opportunities to do because of work gets those faster. <laughs> <laughs> so every chance you get there, huh? Yes. Okay, Anita, you mentioned about writing. Yes, I love to write specifically. I love to write fan fiction. That's one of my hobbies. And being a VP, as well as handling the newsletter, Toastmaster, that incorporates my hobby. And writing is important for writing speech, too. Yes. That's a good way. And Evan, improv. Yeah, I take improv at Second City. I've, I've been there a couple years now and perform a little bit there. And I actually have used it on some speeches, right, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. good skill to have, right, right. And Barbara, you mentioned about one of uh, your highlights was traveling to Melbourne for a oh, conference. Oh yes, yes. I always read where the next conference for international will be, and they said one time it was going to be in Australia. So since they didn't make it, I said, I'm going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to the Kuala Lumpur for the Toastmasters? I hope to go. Yeah? Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Okay, and Yin, you actually say making music. I didn't know about that. That was my passion since I was 16 years old, and that died down, but this became my new passion. And since now I'm showing up in life, I'm putting a five to seven minute speech with music. <coughs> and Ooh. maybe, like some of you all said, Toastmasters can save this world. Yes, yes, yes. Gonna give you the certificate, please <coughs> hold it and stay. Come up with it. Closer. <laughs> Alan, Anita, and Sophia. Just a little bit closer. Oh, you're going this way? <laughs> yeah, okay, so now, photos. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you can Thank you very much, you can eat the book. And I know you're all anxiously waiting is our contest chair, division governor, Charles Chapman. Great contest. I want to thank you all for taking time out. I want to thank you before I give out the trophy so I get your attention. <laughs> We, it's a little speedy process, but we're going to go right through it here. I'd like to bring up a couple of district representatives, Mr. Don Williams and Ms. Melissa Newport, to help me give out this great prize. We have literature out in the hall in case you want to take a look at it. They're running for a few offices. We're going to do table topic first and foremost. So let's have a small, big drum roll for third place, because it's nice to show up. It's going to say show up. You ain't got no wood. It's OK. OK, third place, table topic, Jack Chilapi. Second place, table topic, second place winner is Renan Harris. For you, come closer. We bite. <laughs> Table topic at the district, April the 25th, Saturday night at 7 o'clock, is Susan Horsfall. Yeah. Contest person who's going to get his shot or her shot ready, maybe a series of shots. <laughs> We're going to start with third place for the International Central North Division Contest, and in third place, we have Miss Anita Perkins. Yay. Thank you very much. 
Drum roll for second place. Let's hear it. This is the winner of Central North International Speech Contest for second place is Yang Mini. Central North Speech Contest. <laughs> okay, no more drama. Ramon Harris. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to take a group photo. No hands. <laughs> Trustmasters, uh, great job. Bill, we appreciate you and your club. There's one thing I'm remiss in saying pay your dues. <laughs> this ain't free. We got to have your money. So everyone should pay up. We got a big membership drive coming. Give up the cash now. Pay your dues because this is what Toastmasters do. This means the journey.